Welcome back to the Family Festival Sale Broadcast Special on Channel 82 Bermuda. We got involved with Bermuda Sleep Foundation as a director um, and started taking them on as a consultant because I have a consulting business. And five hours turned into 10 hours, turned into 15 hours, turned into 20 and on and on until now I'm executive director, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, I actually went on one of our five day voyages with the youth group and I was so impacted by the effectiveness of sailing with young people that I decided to hang around and, and stay involved. Um, so just like kids experience on Spirit of Bermuda, when they go out, there are certain principles that you don't have a choice but to experience when you go out. I mean, teamwork, uh, accountability, you're accountable for a boat while you're out there, responsibility. So families can not only spend time together, but I think people actually grow as individuals by going out on the water and having to actually operate a sailing vessel. Um, this is a great event because uh, sailing is something that unites families, uh, especially if you're on a sailboat like Spirit of Bermuda Sailboats because it takes a team to sail. Whether you're out with your family, whether you're out with friends, it normally involves everybody getting involved. And of course, um, what better way to spend a day than out on our waters? So Spirit of Bermuda comes every year to give people the opportunity to, to see what she looks like inside, down below. Uh, sometimes people don't get that opportunity. And then they're actually going to be able to speak to some of the young people who've done voyages. That's actually who's doing the tours, right? And the boat is that way. <laughs> We head over to the Spirit of Bermuda to meet Lakai Dill. She's the Education and Program Manager and will give us a full tour of the vessel. We are about to board Bermuda's national tall ship. Spirit of Bermuda was constructed in 2004. The keel was laid and she came home for a maiden voyage in 2006. And she has since which been running programs for middle school students, uh, students 12 and up. Um, taking kids out for five day voyages and then during the summertime for overseas voyages. So our mandate is to take out all middle school students on board Spirit for an experiential learning uh, residential program. We saw an ad in the paper for Watch Leader and I applied for the position the day that the uh, ad the deadline uh, was closing and I was called up for an interview the following week. I flew up to Gloucester and I sailed from Gloucester to Bermuda and that was my introduction to the sailing world. I've been with the ship for just over two years now and I absolutely love it. This is a key industry um, for world commerce but more importantly to Bermuda because we have such a strong strong tradition historical tradition in in the maritime industry so this is really a way for us as Bermudians to reconnect to our roots and I applaud um, the organizers for for bringing this very very important industry to Bermuda's attention and so we're very happy to participate and we're very happy to let Bermudians see what the kids get to do when they come out for our programs. Uh, well, my experience, I've had great experiences all, all my trips. I've gone about like three, three or four trips. Um, meeting new people, um, being on the water, you know, the breeze blowing, the waves. Um, putting the sails up, you know, you got a little workout. You know, it's great. It's a great experience, you know. It's, it's a great experience, you know. Um, me, myself, I didn't picture myself being here today. Uh, a few months back, Malcolm Kirkland actually came and asked me if I wanted to come, and I just took the risk and came, and I found out that I really like it. So. Okay, well, best experience would have to be um, Newport Bermuda race. Um, when we were coming back, we um, had a lot of wind. A lot of them, we actually reached 15 knots, and it was, it was just great to see that the boat can actually move really, real quick, really quick. So, you were standing on a three-masted schooner. Our Spirit of Bermuda was built to replicate a historical uh, Royal Navy vessels that um, were interdicting the slave trade between West Africa, the uh, eastern coast of the States, and, and the Caribbean. So, she has a traditional design but she is outfitted with some luxury items as well. So when we go below deck, we'll see some of those luxury items. But on deck, um, we have, she has seven sails all together. The students typically get to sail with um, five of the sails. They, she has over 4,000 square feet of sail area. The tallest mast on the ship is 98 feet above deck. So she's, she's pretty giant. She is, 118 feet long, that's her sparred length, meaning from the very aft of the ship to the tip of the bowsprit. And then on her deck, she's 86 feet. 
and at her widest point at midship she is 23 feet across. So this back area is what we call the cockpit and this is where a lot of the decisions are made. This is where the captain uh, sort of has command of the ship. He normally stays in this area, he or she. The students who are always in charge of steering the ship, they stand at the helm. This is a beautiful, beautiful helm that's made of Bermuda cedar. And then the binnacle, uh, the, the stand where the compass is sitting on, that's also made of Bermuda cedar. Families actually sent down two containers full of Bermuda cedar uh, when the ship was being built. And you'll see cedar trim on deck um, at the helm and the binnacle, and then below deck in all of the cabinetry and, and the, the wall trimmings of the ship. Um, the experience has been really good. Um, I've been here since 2010. I've gone on several voyages with this ship. Um, this ship definitely does lives up to its name, builds character, uh, builds the skill of leadership that everyone needs to work with anyone nowadays. Um, you bring really good friends on here. You make good friends. You bring them home with you. Um, I've never really been on here where there's been any conflicts. I think this vessel is extremely professional how they deal with situations and I think it's excellent. I've had a lot of experiences on here. Um, negative and positive, but the positive outweigh the negative by far. Um, I've had experiences where I've been in 30 foot waves, water crashing over the sides, wind blowing almost 60 knots, um, freezing temperatures, it's great. It is literally something that everybody has to try in their life at some point. Um, I've made great friends. I've had we've had so many times joking around in Canada. In Canada, a town called Lunenburg, we spent about three hours sitting down below, just cracking jokes, just having a great time. We absolutely love it. Sailing is a passion for me. That's all I can really say for how I got involved. With the Kai shows us a bit more about the spirit of Bermuda. Now we're standing in the aft part of the ship. Um, to my right, we have our mizzen mast. So this is the shortest mast on the ship. Attached to attached to these masts, we have Bermuda rig sails. Bermudians were responsible for designing the triangular shaped sail. We have a lot to contribute to uh, the world of sailing. Spirit of Bermuda, because of the Bermudian rig, can sail up to 60 degrees close to the wind. So she can take advantage of uh, shorter routes and get into places a lot quicker than other tall ships, for example, that have the square shaped sails. So right now we're on the foredeck of the ship and to my right, people always wonder what these funny looking things are. They're called cow vents. They provide ventilation below deck. So you can actually twist them off. So in the event of uh, an emergency, a fire uh, emergency, for example, and we need to cut off circulation below, you unscrew these and you pop in a cap. So when you're sailing and you want to provide more circulation below deck, you turn these so that they're facing into the wind. And when we have the AC on, for example, below deck, then you turn them against the wind so you can keep it nice and cool below deck. Did you say AC? I said AC. There's one, that's one of the luxury items that did not exist in the 1700s, but it certainly exists on Spirit in 2012. So right now we're standing on the farmost tip of the ship. This is what we call the foredeck area, the, for, the uh, forward of the foremast pin rail. This is where we have the bowsprit. So the bowsprit is the part of the ship. It's this uh, horizontal pearl that's jetting out. And at the tip of the bowsprit, you have uh, the outer sail attached to it. That's what we call the outer jib. And thanks to sign works, we actually have a, a beautiful, ginormous Bermuda crest on the outer jib sail. They, we put it on when we sailed up to Virginia for the upsail uh, festival. So now that we've finished the on-deck tour, we'll head below deck so that you can see uh, Spirit and how she looks below deck. So the first compartment that we pass through, that's the navigation room, we can take a tour afterwards. But the very, uh, the very first door that you see to the left, that's the crew bathroom. Crew actually do get to shower on boys, so it's a little, a little secret. So this hose actually pulls out. You can attach this faucet to the, to the, uh, the bulkhead, the wall, and this lever 
you just press that to release water. You get hot water too. So it's it's very, very spacious. It doesn't feel spacious when you first come on board, but after you get used to it, you're just like, oh, this is, this, this, this works. Engine room. The engine room was designed so that a group of students could accompany the engineer so that they could do some hands-on learning. We have a water maker. That's the white machine that you see straight to the left. And then we have our generator, this white box behind me. And then our diesel engine that is to the right on the floor. So we run the generator on a six hour, six on, six off system. So we can get AC. It provides us with electricity to run the refrigeration. So this is our navigation room. It's also called the chart room because we keep our physical paper charts down here as well. We have, uh, by law, we have to have crew members who know how to use paper charts because electronic equipment could fail at any moment, but crew, we need to be able to pinpoint where we are and figure out how we're gonna get from A to B. So we have our electronic chart plotter. We can actually download software that'll give us uh, charts for any part of the world. And as long as that software is uploaded, we can pretty much use this as our as our go-to. So it gives you all sorts of interesting information. It gives you water depth for different areas. It gives you um, buoys and markers um, near all of the coastlines. Um, it shows what you're not supposed to hit in the water. You know, that's very important. And then it gives you all sorts of interesting data about the spirit of Bermuda. So wind speed, wind direction, um, our GPS position, all sorts of stuff like that. So you have information that is um, connected in different ways. So this is the chart plotter. And then this is what we call our BNG. So this also gives wind speed, etc. So in this part compartment, we have 12 bunks. And you have a mix of crew, permanent crew and student crew who sleep here. So it's not just one compartment per, you know, for participants versus crew. We all sleep in the same area. So when crew are, you know, running program after program and you're on the ship for like three weeks out of the month, you get a tuck bunk and then you also get a little curtain as well. Yeah, so you can create a little bit of privacy. It's pretty much all communal space, but sometimes you need privacy. These we put in just recently. This wasn't part of the original design of the ship. These are just extra storage compartments because when you have 21 kids on board and you have three teachers, and you have nine crew members, it can get a little stuffy. So underneath the bunks, do you want to mind just hold it? You actually put all of your personal belongings and your bags. So each student has one half of a locker space. One half, yeah, not the whole, not the whole thing. One half, one half. It can work, I promise you. So you either put your stuff in that locker space, or you put it in the cubby hole, or, thank you, or you just put your bag at the foot of your bunk. Again, my name is Lakai Deal, the Education and Programs Manager with Bermuda Stu Foundation. This completes our tour of Spirit of Bermuda. If you are interested in getting involved, um, seeing what types of voyages we offer, feel free to give us a call, 737-5667, or email us on info at bermudasloop.org. We look forward to having you on board. Thank you very much. Family Festival of Sale will be back after these messages.